Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's uh, interview. Um, I want to see, first of all, I'm really happy to see that so many of you are tapping in and you are following and we do read all of your comments and react on them. So thank you so much. And this week we have Pauline, who is going to be the interviewer. So I'm just going to hand the, the word right over to you. And hi, Pauline. <laughs> hi. So, um, yes, I'm, I'm Pauline. I know Elisa for quite a bit by now. And uh, I have some, some questions actually about uh, your mission and the grid work. And mm -hmm. um, how it, um, it showed up in your system, how you were called for it and how, how it relates to the collective. Oh, it's, it's funny because... <sighs> Somehow, I, I always knew. I remember the first time I had this conversation with my mom, I was about four and a half year old. And she told me I was Danish. And I look at her really angry. I go like, I don't belong to Denmark. Denmark. I'm sent here to travel the world and I belong to the universe. <laughs> and she just looked at me like, girl, like, how do you even know the world? the universe you know <laughs> and, yeah. and i always had been drawn to pyramids i always been drawn to to egypt right and i and at the same time i could not make a painting without drawing eyes into everything so it's it has been a part of me always um somewhere in 2012 i got all these downloads and and I started to be thrown around into figuring out how am I going to do whatever I'm going to do, who am I, what I'm here to represent. Um, and it's always an ongoing journey, right? Even that you know, then you still need to know somehow. But it, it came to me, I think when it really hit me was when I was in Bosnia. The first time in 2014. I know this shit, really? Or you just put it into my head? Okay, anyway. So... <laughs> 2014 apparently um and i had to go i was invited down there from some archaeologists to feel what was in the pyramids and, and the stone structures and all these things and so i was just telling everything i was feeling and so forward and learned being and, and and all these things and and the place was like welcome home and I was like, bosnia has this home you know but it was like welcome home and promise to come back because you are part of us and you need to travel and connect us all around the globe. So I literally, what I did was I was doing a channel for something else. And through the channel, they were like, oh, now she's listening. So we're going to talk to herself, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was the part where I started to become conscious about the whole, um, become conscious about the whole, uh, the, the whole grid work, but I didn't know how to put it into uh, manifestation yet. So what I did was I, I, I was following the flow. I was following the calling. I was going to the Egypt. I was going to Romania. I, I had no plans before going. I, I had no structure. It's not like like I have this big manual of how to do what. It's, it's like literally just throw myself out there and, and with the people who feel called to join us because those who feel called to join us are people who who belongs to the mission who, who belongs to the energy that needs to be transcended in order of doing this reconnection um, and then when we are there in the moment <laughs> then everything happens the, the energy guides us to where we have to go the the frequency the volume of the sounds the mega hats everything so everything is created in the moment because i believe the universe says <laughs> that the authenticity of existence is what you create in the now. And so all this grid work, it will always be created in the now. I can give a kind of a idea of what we're going to do or where we're going to go. And, uh, you know, like, okay, we have this hotel, but <laughs> practical. But but the very essence of the flow is what's going to happen when we are there. And uh, I don't know up front. I have a feeling in in my body because normally there's integration going on. Everybody is 
who's joining have this integration process before entering it than the retreat itself. And it's not like we send a manual and we have like weekly updates of progressing. No, it happens automatically because it's part of the soul journey. So everything is in the flow of what people are called to. If you feel called to join, you are meant to. And everything else would happen automatic and in the moment of what we're guided to. Yes. Yeah. No, I can obviously relate to everything you say. And and actually, you know, the moment you say, like, the, the moment you're there, the moment you, and, and things are happening, is it like a collaboration between what you said, like, you know, inner earth, the energy is outside. Like, how many people are actually, how many beings are actually working together in such a moment? How, how layered oh. is it? <laughs> yeah, because it feels like there's always so much uh, information. There's so many dimensions. And, mm -hmm. and if we zoom into that, what actually happens? What actually happens? And why do we need humans to stand there? And why do we need a group? to? And why do we need you to stand there? What, what happens? So we are all representing different vibrations. We are all representing different frequencies. In order of um, releasing a frequency, if we look at a, uh, a place with a donation of different frequencies right yes. and in order of, of being a vibrational image to each frequency to transcend it you need a person who have a vibrational image to these frequencies there's probably a person who in a past life have been going through something like this so when we are integrating uh letting go of female suffering or whatever it has to be somebody who has been through it in this life or past life that feel drawn to it because it's their life call and then they are vibrational the match to this and can transcend it the universe told me and this, this is so oh my god i'm gonna say this out loud but i am then <laughs> some kind of <laughs> my energy is some kind of key mm -hmm. and that that frequency just has to go there because it, it it kind of are neutral in the form that i don't link with these colors but i do link to the keyhole that has to be unlocked on the other side of the colors mm -hmm. so that means that it's not something i can do by myself it mm -hmm. is a job we are here to do together It is a travel on a spiritual level, but it's also a travel on a human level. One thing is that we as humans have to do it, but it's also because of the reconnection to the consciousness of what is there, the reconnection to the history, what needs to be rewritten and remembered. Mm -hmm. um, and these places are just great gateways for that. Mm -hmm. And the people who come there with the beautiful souls have missions on their own. And in order of fulfilling them, they need to link to this energy and deeper knowledge of themselves and the place and integration and stuff. So you can say that, why do people need to go there? <laughs> Humans need to go there. It's that we need to go there, one for ourselves and one for the reconnection to that self. But we also need to go there to reconnect to the place. If you have a flower, I have a flower. Whoa. Okay. You have a flower. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ta -da! Ta -da! I have not seen one in your uh, roses. Authenticity. <laughs> okay. If you have a flower and you water it, you sing for it, smell better, it feels you're connecting to it. It feels you're one with it. If you forget to to water it, you don't notice it, you are saying cursing word to it, 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 it will fall down. It will be sad and you can feel it on, on it. It will start <laughs> to descend. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is the same with these places. Yeah. If you bring your love, if you bring your consciousness, you bring your awareness, it will flower, it will bring the awareness is back to you because everything is one, everything is connected. And so are these places. So it's a part of the, the game on earth. It's the connecting into oneness and bringing it into the consciousness and the reintegration of what is going on. Beautiful. I have two questions at the same time in my head. Uh, great. Three. Of course. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, um, first yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I'm gonna go with just just a, another one about the grid work. So, um, you talk about the knowledge and what was, um, how how was the plan? How was the grid? How was the grid before? Was the grid ever fully connected? And yes. uh, and 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 how did planet Earth and the beings? the beings uh, at that time vibrate as it was um, linked <laughs> yeah <laughs> that how 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 was it and and what are we what are we doing because that's that's the thing how huh? we re we, we reconnected so how how was it before when it was so one thing uh, there is a lot of different grids on the world, world like if, if we tune into the grids people are always talking about grids and the different kind of grids but the grid that we are tuning into is the grid that was um helping to neutralize the planet back when atlantis was uh, alive so before its fall atlantis for me was not one place it was all over the world it was a time era where everything was connected, where there was actually a perfect flow of the energy surrounding the globe and the frequencies of which we were moving with was a higher level than what we have. We do have access to it now, but we have, don't have consciously a conscious access to it, everyone, you know. So it was before the fall of Atlantis, uh, this grid was one. Then the whole human ego came and the whole... It was not even human at that time because we also had the whole uh, aliens here and integration. So it, let's say it, it's it's the manifest of the um, conscious awareness of uh, ego thing where one can be more than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and it made this separation thing. And it, the separation thing was needed in order of us learning the depth of ego and the depth of, of, of self-awareness and etc but it also brought a lot of harm with it and one of the things was how our planet got uh, separated and how the neutralizing on the planet was separated these gateways on the grid was also used as telepathic portals to the outer space but also to inner earth so it contains a lot of secrets, but also a lot of awareness and knowledge and history. There are so many gaps in our history today. And, and these places fulfill these holes. They fulfill these gaps when we link to the consciousness, when we are not there to take or to gain, but simply there to connect and listen. Uh, they are willing to tell so much more. And so when we are in those places, uh, reconnecting, allowing that energy to flow again and the grid to, 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 to realign in a way in those places, is that knowledge that comes up through us, is that something that is access, is accessible for everyone on the globe and above and below once it's reconnected? How does that work? Yes and no. <laughs> it, it is available. Uh, for everyone, because nobody is more or less than others, we are all we we all on the same level in this form. Like you always say, God love everyone, right? It's the same with the universe. The universe do not judge in that form and sense. But are you supposed to link to it? Are you supposed to be a vibration on the match to that knowledge? And are you ready for being a vibration on the match to that knowledge? It's a whole other question. And a lot of people will not be able to or ready for being a vibrational match to that knowledge uh, or even wanting to. So it is available for those who are ready to take it in their heart and those who are ready to feel it uh, as truth within their world reality. And for those who are not, it will simply feel like another mumble jumble <laughs> from spiritual hippie people. And uh, that's fine too, because, <laughs> because that is just not what their life purpose is about. And then uh, we just love them for that. Like a true hippie would say. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, it's really beautiful. 
And so these vi vibrations, you know, you you, you took the the bracelet, right? That's that's also another uh, another thing that I that I'm very curious about. If if you uh, if you zoom into what what the crystals and the coatings inside do, how does it vibrate off of the body and the body system? How how the, does it... um, the easiest way to explain it? Like they. There's so many ways to explain it, but we know that consciousness travels with water, right? Because within the energy in the water, we can we can measure that. So even for scientific people, they can measure the consciousness in the water. Mm -hmm. If you play for water, it uh, it crystallizes different. If you play good music or hard music, or or you love it or you hate it, the, the water crystallizes different. So we are scientifically aware. <laughs> that water has consciousness now within the physical body is approximately 73 percent water which means that this is consciousness floating in your veins floating in your body the consciousness in the stones is the same the consciousness within the water you drink is the same the consciousness within the water you eat is the same so your consciousness links to each other. If we now can look at it as vibrations instead of water, then if you have, uh, I'm gonna take you guys. I'm gonna take you. <laughs> if you if you have stones, uh, crystals, gems, they are holding a vibration. They are holding a consciousness. One thing is the consciousness of the minerals, which is created of physically. Another thing is the consciousness, which is um, the frequency of the memory they hold and their purpose, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same for us. We, we hold the minerals there is uh, in our body and muscle tissues, but we also hold our soul. We hold the consciousness of our memories, feelings, and our thoughts. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the stone being a vibration only maps to something which... It's a very basic one that's inside of you. So if I would walk around with these stones, whoo, it's pure purity. Then what it does is like it grounds me, grounds me massively. It will make other people fly away. So, <laughs> so it, it grounds me and it brings knowledge. It brings clarity. It brings straightforwardness and it helps to um, allow me to express myself without no filter, but in a straight line. So for me, this is what happens if I touch this. If I touch another stone, I don't look. Look at this one. <laughs> we have the obsidian, for example. Obsidian for me is like whoa, intense. Um, then it also does the grounding thing. <laughs> it's more more soft than the other one. But it, it really grounds. So it goes down to the lower chakra and help you feel safe. It, it, it blocks for, not blocks, but it, it helps you to stay safe within a world with a lot of chaos surrounding you. So I, it, it kind of grounds me in my existence and creates um, a kind of a shield that does the negative vibration doesn't enter the field. Wow, I should walk with these actually. So, so I don't know if this got complicated, but every stone has a vibration. They help with a certain thing. They 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 transmit a certain thing. And if you are basically matched to it, or you exactly need that in your system, you can feel it. What is really funny is that people can go into a shop, and you tell them, okay, whatever stone you want, just just feel. And and then people are like, yeah, but I cannot feel it. Blah blah blah. And then after, they're like, yeah, it was like I heard it in my head, I should take that one, but I'm not hearing the stone. I'm like, yes, you are, because they are so telepathetic. So if, if the stone would like you to pick it up, it literally tells you in your mind, pick me up, you know, or, or I'm a beautiful colleague, go to me. So <laughs> everything is consciousness and what you are vibrationally matched to, you will feel drawn to doesn't matter if it's humans, if it's plants, it, if it's your vegetables, or if it's the stones. If you're a vibration on the mat, there will always be this. Did I answer your question or did I just? Yeah, yeah, no. no and, and I think that is also interesting because, of course, when you hold something, you have the, you have the direct, direct translation. There is no filter within 
uh, the kyanite, by the way, <laughs> that that yeah. you have with the, the the material. But of course, people don't always they they don't have that same awareness. But they it still it still does the same thing subconsciously, right? And it brings yeah, up, so yeah, yeah, and, for sure, for sure, it does. And it generally, like when we talk about healing, right? Uh, releasing blocks and, and realigning. I, actually, in my perception, it's the same with, with earth, right? Reconnecting the energy for it to flow, which is the old to go, the new to come, right? In a way. Um, so when I, when I look at you talk about the crystals, about the grids, the way I see you move and how the energy flows, that is what is healing with people, right? When you see people, it's all about the awareness you give to people so that they can... Uh, vibrationally that there is a certain mirror in the places that can be released right i don't know if you understand what i mean but uh, of course I think you, my question is 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 more what is healing truly right what is what allows from person to person what is healing healing is um healing is consciousness yeah. and it's to allow yourself to go through the traumas of what have been and replacing it with a new experience so that you remove whatever was and replace it with something light safe trustworthy a new aspect of 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 the situation mm -hmm. so healing is, is to not fear what you want spin through people but become conscious of it exist and allow it to run through your system and become free from it um healing is also to realize that nothing nothing ever happened to you it happened for you so it's to really truly change this way of looking on on life and trust me like i'll be our friend again on is is not freaking always easy and mm -hmm. we all tap into the suffering role and we all tap into the why is they doing this to me <laughs> this is normal and it's okay but the moment you want to transcend something, the moment you really want to transform it, you have to shift awareness into that. So it's like allowing the emotional uh, process. It's okay to feel uh, abandoned or it's okay to feel that people hurt you or whatever, but uh, it really is. And But then after that, you have to change the perception in order of, not being held down by the density of the experience and then replace it with a trustworthy experience that shows you that life is not evil to you it was just a moment and now that moment can be fulfilled with beauty does it make sense yeah yeah of course and oh, i can okay. relate in the sense that um allowing allowing the the stuff that has happened to to be expressed and within a new context that that is healing but the second part that it didn't happen to you but for you that is a key element but that's also something that i see that is often missing yeah in, yeah in, definitely in the healing in the integration that, process that was it's what keeps us in the suffering it's like they did this to me you know, that, that, that kind of blocks the whole setting yourself free. What I mean is not, you should not take so much responsibility that like I did to myself, you know, that also becomes suffering. So yeah. it's this fine line just between understanding that, yeah, everything happens for you, even if it's painful. So yeah, I was raped. Yeah. I was knocked out. Yeah. I broke a lot of, of bones. It hurt it like shit. Am I am I painted by it now? Yes, I am. Like I, I do see the knuckles, it's a little bit not so girly, you know. But <laughs> but, but was it part of my life experience which brought me exactly to here? Yes, it was. Was it part of what made me walk the path needed to be walked to put myself in the position that I am able to stand here this day to day? Yes, it is. So it's not blaming them. It's not blaming me. It's just to understand that every single thing that happens, it's a part of the whole. And it's for me and not against me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beautiful. How are we with the time? I mean, I, I lose myself so much in the... <laughs> I don't even know how much... I don't, I don't know either. <laughs> Do you do you, do you feel like another question? How do you feel? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I lost it. Um, let's tune back into that. So yes, so those events that you go through in life, right? Like, okay, let's call them uh, the, the more shocking events, the more traumatic mm -hmm. events. Um, do you, is that um, most of the time something that you put into your uh, your list when you say, okay, like I'm going to come back into this body. I'm going to choose my parents. I'm going to, you know, choose this life. How much is uh, written down already? How much just uh, joins as you're in it? And can yeah. you get lost in it? Can you, like, uh, can it be out of the plan? Can, can you lose the line of your own plan? Is I this don't the want this one. <laughs> <laughs> how does that, how does that work? Because, Oh, that's an awesome question. Okay, so uh, let me paint the picture. We have the we have the timeline. The timeline is purple today. So we have the timeline. And on the time, okay, we start another phase. We have the blue imprint. The blue imprint is what you come in. We, you know, the whole star signs and stuff. You know, it's part of your blue imprint. You're born in that on that day. You get this name, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So in your blue imprint, you have vibrations with dust. So you attract um, you attract the things and situations you're meant to attract in order of going through what you're supposed to go through. <laughs> this you cannot change because it's already in your, your blue imprint. Mm -hmm. um, and then, it's like the vibrational uh, blue, match, right? It's the... Tuk -tuk 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 -tuk. Yes. So you attract the situations because with it, within the frequencies in your blue imprint it's already dead and yeah. then you have the environment and everything that also <laughs> attracts these things right because you, you choose your parents in the beginning and stuff like that yes. yeah. this is what you do before you become conscious of stuff when you become conscious of stuff <laughs> you can start choosing differently you can start changing the the patterns of your parents for example in my uh, family they all have this eye thing where they get glasses and stuff and when I was born with with like a building mistake or whatever and they said around my 15 16 I would get glasses and around my 21 I'll not be able to run because I'm walking on the toes I'm running at a half a march on every second day and my eyes are like sharp so, <laughs> so the thing is, yeah so the thing is I, I learned to walk on my own feet and I learned to see things clearly. So because I changed that within my life, then I changed the family error, you know? Yes. Was it written in stones? Yeah, it was kind of written in stones that I was supposed to do that. But on a human level uh, and the illusion of free will, I could have chosen not to. I could have chosen to stay stuck. I couldn't because it's not really on my... But most people can, you know what I mean? So, so it's... it's, it's um... Yes, I, I understand what you're saying. So um, if also within your life experience, you chose to awaken because there's a certain plan mm -hmm. for you. Once you yeah. awaken, you can shift things. You can shift within yeah. yourself and therefore you influence the vibration around you mm -hmm. and can accelerate healing in other people, the planet and so on. Now, that's what makes it really interesting to be a clavian uh, or a seer in this yeah. time because if this was in the 1800 and you will ask me something, I'll just, I'll roll your timeline up yeah, and I'll tell you exactly what's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen, with who it's gonna happen. Yeah, because okay. It's That's written in stone. Nobody has the consciousness level to change it. You know why should? Yes. Tuk -tuk -tuk -tuk. But exactly. But now, when people become more conscious, more aware, when I look into their timelines, the timelines look like this or like this. You know? I feel that there's so many options. So there's so many options, and what I do is like I see all the outcomes at once, and I see which lines they are closest to. And which lines is a closest to a vibration when you match to cross lines. So then people can meet on that exactly time, but only if they want to change that one thing that does that they meet. Ah, that's amazing. That's so, amazing. So like being fear now, I'm like <laughs> looking at like, I can tell you what you're probably going to do. I can also tell you where people are going to come yeah. into your life. But if you're ready for it or not, yeah. it's up to you. But that, that changed the game, right? It makes the game more alive. Yeah. Because people all of a sudden actually have a choice over their own life if they want to. Yeah. And, uh, that, that is, if, if, because that's some, you know, that's amazing what you're saying, because that really links to now we're getting to the complexity that I was, uh, that, that I was. Uh, <laughs> 
somewhere in my consciousness, it was like, I want to go there, there, there. I don't know how to put it in words. I don't know which question to ask. But so that is the difference in, in the time we're in. Like what you said, the, it feels like when you talk about 1800s, I get this. Like, even if you look at movies, everything is like, tall, tall. There's so much. And now, exactly. Yeah. And now there's all these different uh, individualities, all these, you know, but even myself in relations, in relationships or whatever, there's like, there, uh, things move so fast sometimes i don't even know what is me and that i mean you know you you know that better than me but like you know how do you still navigate in a way and i guess then it comes back to the moment and the the, the heart and, and the feeling in the now but it it's amazing to hear the complexity and how you uh, how it links that See is everything yes <laughs> yeah, that is so but it, cool. it is part of this change because when the consciousness level is that high on earth everything becomes more complex on one hand, on the other hand, it moves faster. And yet we still have these physical uh, things. There is so much from the stone age, you know? So the, so, the, 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 the way our the, brain, the human system. Yes, the reptile brain, you know? Yes. So there is this reptilian thing inside of us that just moves and acts like we did in the stone age. And then we are gaining this consciousness level from above and within, and they are not always a match. So people become complex and yet so easy to see what they're going to do. But because it's not linked together, they get super confused. And that's where the heart comes in the picture. The heart comes in the picture when, when you follow that, that there's, there's peace. Uh, I said this in a other interview. I think the, the thing about connecting the, the mental mind and their heart is a thing that we have to look into in 2022. It's this thing about bringing it here yeah. because then we can manifest it. We are confused when these two are not in line. Yeah. And uh, it, it doesn't work yeah. only being in the heart because you have the mind. So if you don't dare to go and watch what is in that mind and know it doesn't control you, but become friends with it, you keep manifesting things where you fall over your own feet. Yeah. So it's really to not fear the mind, not fear the heart, but realign the book. Is is that is that in a way um, uh, bringing consciousness again, bringing consciousness to your blueprint and be able to act consciously and change the outcome in a way, or change or participate yeah. more actively in? Yes, yes, and no. So it's it's um, yes, <laughs> change the outcome if. Uh, you, you cannot change something that's already written but but the funny thing is if there is four outcomes then you choose an outcome that is better for you you know yeah. more in it's alignment, not really more changing the outcome but it is realigning with the outcome there is most beneficial for you and your yeah. That's amazing. i think we have to round off because my phone uh we are we are in 20 2100 and i do everything on my phone and my phone is running out of power <laughs> So, Pauline, thank you so much for joining us and for your awesome questions. I want to uh, tell you people that no matter which interview I'm doing, I'm not prepared for anything. I have no idea what people want to talk about or ask about. I don't talk with them before. Uh, there's no navigations in questions or whatever. So it's as surprising for me as it is for you guys. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to... Uh, I've never told that. So. Back to you, Pauline. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. And uh, now I'm going to say what I say every week. Make sure to push the like button and the subscribe button. And I don't know where I'm supposed to point on the screen, but you guys know better than me. And if any comments to what we're talking about or questions to me or Pauline, just write in the comments below and we will make sure to read it and respond on it. So have a really beautiful week and thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.